Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, the 2008 High School Football Coaches Show. My name is Mike Martin. Joining me is the coach, Chris Wright. Chris, we got a dynamite show this year and a little bit of a change uh, from last year. We'll be covering North and South and Lutheran Kohler, but we do have a change over at Lutheran Kohler. Yes, we have a brand new coach over there, uh, Matt Savadas, taking over. Uh, we'll find out he previously was at Kohler and then uh, is now starting his first year with the uh, co-op program. He's got some great experience, and he'll share that with him, with Chris, when uh, we get into that portion of the show. Now, during the breaks, we'll be showing the uh, home schedule for North, South, and Lutheran Kohler. And then near the end of our show, we'll be showing the uh, broadcast schedule for us this year. Uh, in the show's final segment, we're going to uh, tell about last year, who won the competition, and uh, we'll give our predictions, of course, for this year. Chris, you did pretty good last year. Yes, I did. Let's hope we get the same this year. <laughs> When we come back, I'll be discussing South football with Coach Chris Hines, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. <music> Joining me is uh, head football coach at Sheboygan South, Chris Hines. Chris, thanks a lot for uh, coming in. I know it's a real busy time of year for you. Uh, started practice a couple days ago. Uh, last year, your team went uh, Four and five in, 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 on the season, and you played in a really tough conference. And uh, we were talking before we went on, you wound up hitting all the high teams a, a tri championship, and you wound up playing all three of them. What will it take this year to get your team a little higher in the conference standings? Well, I think when you're playing S. Robinson's and Bayports and De Piers and Green Bay Notre Dames, you don't have a big margin for error. So obviously, it starts with we have to limit our mistakes. Um, you know, if we're going to make mistakes, then we're giving those guys extra opportunities and they don't need the help. So it really starts with us and mentally being prepared and, and limiting our mistakes as much as possible. Another big focus for us this year is special teams. Um, as I watch a film last year of our games, uh, we got beat pretty bad in special teams and, and that f responsibility falls on myself. We probably didn't focus enough on practice, in practice on it last year. Uh, so this year we're going to put a bigger focus on special teams and hopefully win the field position game where we got beat pretty bad last year. Now one of the things you'd mentioned earlier before we came on the air again was uh, winning uh, games when you're playing teams that you think you should beat, you know, yeah. that becomes important. Yeah, and obviously, I mean, if we think talent-wise we match up pretty well with, with teams in our league, then we have to win those games. You know, we can't let any game slide. We have to play to our full potential every week. You know, if we want to get over the top, like you're saying, if we want to get to five and four and have a winning record and go to the playoffs again, as we did a couple of years ago, you know, we got to do take care of those things. Now, your team took a bit of a hit from last year, losing Ray Smith. I mean, he was one of the best backs in the conference and well, uh, was a real uh, force when he was on the field. No uh, how do you make so up for his loss? I think, number one, you, you're right. Ray was a great player for us for three years. I, mean, I think the best back in the conference last year, one of the best in the state. And he was a focus of our offense. Uh, obviously, we won't have him there. We have three kids, we think, uh, that are battling for the tailback position. I would anticipate they all play um, unless somebody really progresses uh, at a huge rate in the next two weeks. But I think we can use it as an advantage. I think we're going to be harder to defend this year. Last year, teams could focus on Ray, and they were going to be right because we were going to try to get him the ball. I think this year we're going to utilize more of our offense. We've got two, we think, two and two great receivers back. We like our tight ends a lot. We like our fullback a lot. So I think we're going to be more diversified offensively, which is going to make us harder to defend. One of the things that I think South got a reputation for is uh, strength in the offensive line. And you know, you look back over the years, they've really had some very fine mm -hmm. offensive linemen. Uh, Jones is one of the guys that yeah. comes to mind right away, and I right. think the Niles brothers. Yeah. Uh, how's the offensive line look this year, and do you have some anchors that you can depend on? Absolutely. I, I think it's a strength of our team, if, if you look at it as a whole, is our offensive line. We return four starters and our tight end from the offensive line. Uh, to give you a couple names, the first one, James Boutel was second team all-conference last year. He's back at tackle for us this year. Aaron White's been a three -year var will be a three-year varsity player at guard. I mean, we, we love him and his leadership and his work ethic. Ryan Urbanick is back at center. Corey Wunsch is back at guard. I mean, so we are very <laughs> excited about our offensive line and anticipate great things out of those guys this year. 
Now, you lost a pretty good quarterback last year in John Kabai, but you do have your receivers mm -hmm. back. Yeah. Uh, how does that portion of your uh, offense look? Uh, obviously, the quarterback is uh, very important. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're bringing eight back on offense, but we're missing three key positions. I mean, we lost a tackle, we lost a quarterback, and our tailback. That's vital, but what I do like this year is we have three kids competing for that quarterback job. They're very well coached, so I'm confident whoever comes out of, of that competition um, is going to be a very good quarterback for us this year. And it is nice that we've experienced line around him. We'll have an experienced receivers around him, an experienced fullback, and that'll make the transition easier. Let's talk about, you talked about the quarterbacks being well coached. You do have a new face on the coaching staff. You lost Chris Korf. Uh, due to marriage, <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. But, <laughs> but uh, who is this new face? And it's going to be someone, obviously, that people are familiar with that yeah. know uh, high school football in the area. Well, we're extremely excited and fortunate to have Dan Yedis coaching with us this year um, at Sheboygan South, and he'll be coaching quarterbacks for us. Uh, you know, that's why I feel very confident about our quarterback position. I know that we'll be ready every week. Uh, he'll also. You know, he, he's also almost like an assistant coach or a head coach. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, he has so much experience. He's somebody that I can, you know, question. Will he be and, calling the offense then? No, he won't. Jim Renselman's going to be our offensive coordinator who's been with Atchaboy and South, I think, about 15 years roughly. I might be a little off there, but longer than I have. Uh, and I have the utmost confidence that he'll do a great job. He's extremely organized. He knows our offense extremely well. Uh, is Dan going to play a role in assisting him? Absolutely. You know, is Dan going to play a big role in our offense? He, yeah, he is. But, but uh, there should be no doubt about who's calling the plays, and Jim Renzman okay. will be calling the plays. Now, your first love is defense, and yeah. over the course of your career itself, you've called the defense. Does that yeah. uh, remain the same again this year? Yep, I'll be calling the defense this year, and honestly, I think I've got to do a better job than, than I have the last couple of years. Yeah, but let's um, put it this way. When you look back three or four years ago and you're yeah. calling defense, it was a lot different yeah. than over the last couple because of the talent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I mean, we've had some very good defensive players. Um, but I, I need to make it a focus again, and, and I think having – Run, uh, Coach Runsman with his experience and Coach Yedis with his experience and Coach Goodman with their experience all on the offensive side of the ball. It's going to allow me to fo focus more on defense. Um, and you won't have we, to split your time. Right, about and, those and not that I was doing it a lot last year because Coach Korf did a great job and we hope he'll be back with us in the future. Um, but I need to reprioritize and my, you know, other than being the head coach, the administrative things, uh, my main focus on the field is defense, and we've got to get better defensively if we're going to if we're going to get to the playoffs again. Last question, Chris: uh, How do you see the conference shaking out now? Just so our fans know, our first game is going to be the North South game, but again, this year, like last, it's a non-conference. But how do you see the rest of the conference schedule playing out? Well, I think I mean, any time you're in a conference with Eshwabanon and Bayport and appear just with their tradition and the number of kids they're going to have out and the way their communities view athletics, they're always going to be in the hunt. You know, uh, I think from a traditional Fox River Valley team that I think is going to be very strong is Preble um, this year and in the years to come. Their, their JV team has been extremely successful. Their freshmen, I mean, at every level they've been successful. And they were a very good team last year. Uh, so I really look to Preble and, and Eshwabanon, Bayport, you know, right. the usual suspects. Uh -huh. You know, Green Bay Notre Dame's lost quite a bit, but when you have tradition and, and kids expect to win, mm -hmm. that goes a long way. Okay. Know. Chris, thanks a lot for yeah. stopping in. I really appreciate it. When we come back, Chris Wright, my partner, will be talking to Steve Brixen from Sheboygan North. Welcome back, everybody. I'm with uh, Coach Brixen from Sheboygan North. Uh, Steve, uh, you've been in Sheboygan for quite a few years now. Uh, you know, had the highlights and the lowlights. Uh, how's it been going here for the last few years? Well, you know, we had a bad year last year. You know, we want to make up for that and uh, sort of put that behind us. And you have to do that when you have a year like that. So uh, we're excited about this year. We've got a lot of young guys coming up, and hopefully we can play some of those guys and get them on the varsity. And, uh, we're excited because we've got a great group and um, just great philosophy, great attitude, and um, the kids are buying into it, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll do what we did a couple of years ago and make it into the playoffs. Well, hopefully you know, and most people know, I, I'm a big fan of you. I see you in the fitness center. 
I know you're in the halls. I know you're talking to my baseball players. I know you're trying to get kids out to play, and that's kind of part of your job, but uh, I know you're trying to do the right things. Well, we do. We try to, you know, I'm, luckily I am in the school, and I teach in there, so I, uh, you know, have access or to see the kids often. And, um, you know, it's not like we go out and search for them. You know, we want them to come to us and play. But, you know, we put the word out. We might put a bug in somebody's ear and maybe have some friends talk to others. And, you know, the program has grown, and it's leveled off. So we're, we're right about where we want to be right now. And um, all three levels, freshman, JV, and varsity, um, are, are, are doing pretty well. I mean, we had really pretty good seasons with our freshman and JV team. And um, those guys are now coming up and, and going to feed into the mix. So um, overall, I just like I said, the climate this year has been really, really, really uh, super. Uh, we went in the weight room all summer long. We had good turnout and did our plyos. And um, like I said, we just had good turnout. And so we're pretty excited this year. Yeah, you mentioned before a little bit about numbers. You said you had over 40 freshmen out. And the last few years, you've got, your program's gotten close to 90 to 100 kids. Yeah, yeah, we're over 100. Last year, we had about 130. We're at about close to 120 this year. You know, we're proud of that, you know. Uh, of course we want to get out there and win. And we, we emphasize winning, but you know, there are other things that are important to us as well as teachers and coaches that are, that are a little more important than winning, you know. And, and that's helping these young men develop into good people. And, and you know, they're already good people, but we're just trying to, uh, you know, help them get, you know, make good choices and things like that. And, um, you know, like I say, we got a lot of leaders this year. Our senior group, our juniors last year, uh, sort of waiting in the wings, you know, and they're out this year and uh, they're outstanding. You know, I have, this is probably the best senior leadership group that I've had. Uh, sort of reminds me of a couple years ago when I had, you know, the, the playoff team because they just led and they treated everybody very well. And it's not, uh, you know, sophomore versus freshman or senior versus this. Uh, sure, there's competition going on, but uh, there's a lot of support with everybody and makes a good atmosphere for our program. Let's briefly talk about last year. You're playing a tough league, <laughs> tough yep. league and your schedule doesn't help either. No, but you know when we first found out we were going to get into the Fox River Classic, we we saw the teams that uh, you know not like the, the, the you know the Fox River Valley with our Green Bay teams. They weren't uh, up to par. They certainly are. And now we've got the other teams from the Bay Conference in there. You know, we first saw that, sort of looked at that and said, "Wow, that's that's a pretty tough conference." But you know, if we're going to do what we say here and try to make it to the playoffs and get deeper into the playoffs each year, those are the kind of teams we want to play and those are the kind of teams we're going to be playing. So if we can compete and do well in our conference, then uh, you know I think if we can get into the playoffs, then maybe we'll have a chance at uh, taking a step further than we did a couple years ago. And I think this year you're playing the opposite schedule from last year, but then it sounds like divisions hopefully, hopefully. next year. Yeah, we talked about that at the conference or our coaches meeting. And uh, we are hopefully, like the other sports, are in the, both of the conferences, and, and we're going to do that. And hopefully we'll have, uh, which I do believe is going to work, where we're actually going to have a north-south game that's not a non-conference game. <laughs> and uh, that's been, you know, sort of interesting the last two years where we play them at the first game of the year, which we're not too fond of. But, um, but we've got to play them sometime. You know, we wish the, you know, the school was going on and we'd have, you know, a uh, little bit bigger of a crowd, but we, we get pretty decent-sized crowds anyway for that game. But uh, like I said, we're, we're pretty pumped up about what was going on this year. We've had a great first three days, and I uh, had some contact days right at the end of July that I used, and we had a good turnout for that as well. And this is probably the first time, and this is going into my fourth year now, that we've been able to sort of sit back as coaches and watch our guys develop as players and really understand the offense and defense more than I've ever seen it happen in the, in the past three and a half years or so. I think a definite strength, and I've mentioned this you know, around town a little bit. You have a lot of skilled players, and you got a lot of kids that can play. You have many players that can play those positions. I mean, at North, I know there's a lot of good athletes, and it seems they all play the, you know, same positions, which is a, probably a big thing. And you're really deep there. We're always we always seem to be real deep at the skill positions. You know, with our halfbacks, our fullbacks, our uh, our D-backs. Uh, we have a quarterback uh, competition this year, which is very exciting. A number of kids that can play there. Um, we've got we've got several that are trying out for it, and um, we're narrowing it down right now. I haven't chosen a starter yet, but uh, I don't want to go into the South game having to do what I did last year, where I, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do, and I played both of them in the South game, and um, I'd like to go in with with one starter and stick with them all year, and hopefully we can do that. But if they don't make it, you know they'll be on the field somewhere because they're just that gifted. Yeah, we do have a lot of talent. There's no doubt about it. You know, North has never been blessed with big guys or big size linemen. We are a little bit bigger this year on the line. And um, probably, the, the, I'd like to say, one of the most solid lines I think we've got. But uh, we don't have much depth. You know, when those big guys, if they were to go down, we don't have, uh, you know, the size that would come in and fill that in. But, uh, but the skill players are there. And we might be doing some tandem things in the backfield this year. 
Yeah, I know you mentioned uh, the horses a little bit. I know talking to Taylor Coulter, he said, guys are trying to do the right things. You do have some big boys up there that could help that. And I know Taylor's one of your leaders there. Yeah, Taylor's outstanding. Taylor and AJ and, and I, you know, I wish I could mention everybody, but all the captains have really done a nice job of just really buying into what we sold even the first year that I got here. And that's the thing that I'm real proud of, that we haven't changed one bit. You know, the main, the main thing is when we came in here, we, we told everybody we were going to make a this a positive experience and make it a fun time for kids and grow the program. And we've done all those things. Unfortunately, we haven't been on the wind uh, column as much as we'd like to be. But I hope that now that we've got the wins in the younger levels, freshmen and JVs, as far as last year, you know, now we've got some of those kids up at varsity and hopefully we can uh, turn that into some wins. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, one final thing I want to mention to you, I know you're very heavily involved with the Youth Football League as well. And I think talking to both you and Chris, great strides with that program and helping you guys out as well. Right, we're real pleased with the way that our relationship is with, uh, with the youth football program. They have over 300 kids in the program this year. That's, I think, uh, the most they've ever had. And I think that is one of the reasons why we've done so well in our contact days in the summer this year and then even the beginning of last three days is because these kids have learned this now in sixth or seventh and eighth grade, and they're coming up into, the, into North, having known the North offense, and likewise with South. So I'm sure Chris is just as pleased seeing that those young people are coming up, and they're, you know, we've got to do that in order to compete with these other teams. We can't bring them as, as freshmen and expect them to just learn a brand new offense. These, these young men have to learn how to do that at the seventh or sixth grade level, and they've done that, and it's showing. Well, good luck this year. I, uh, best of luck, we'll see you in the South game and things like that. Uh, when I return, we'll be with uh, Kohler Lucent coach Matt Savada. Welcome back. We're with uh, Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler coach Matt Savada. Matt, welcome to the coaching ranks here in town. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, currently, I'm a, a teacher at Kohler. I'm, just, I'm going to my sixth year as a teacher there. And, um, uh, it's a great place to be. I love being in the area. Uh, I live in Fredonia, so I commute up to this area, and uh, it's it's uh, I always like always like to say it's a good wind up and wind down for the day. But but I do enjoy it up here. Uh, as far as football goes, I have uh, spent the last three seasons at Ozaki High School as a defensive coordinator. Prior to that, I was at Kohler for two years. One as a head coach before they ended the the program. Uh, I've also made coaching stops at Arrowhead High School. Uh, uh, that was that was a good experience. Uh, made it to the Division One state finals game there. That's when Tyler Donovan was was the quarterback, and, and Nick Hayden was there. Uh, two former Wisconsin players. Put that on your resume, by the right, way. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, one year at Concordia University as an assistant, and four years of football at Concordia, also. And you're from the Michigan, the state of Michigan, and you played ball at Concordia. Yes, that that was a that was a great experience. Four years of football there. Uh, one coaching as an offensive lineman, um, learned a lot about football, and, and uh, you think you know something about football in high school until you go to the co college level, and then and they start throwing you around. But good experience, uh, and it's made me, looking back now, a better coach uh, for having that. Well, it sounds like you've packed a lot of things in in uh, the few you know last couple of years. With that, uh, Kohler and uh, Lutheran has struggled the last few years. Uh, what are you going to do to change that? Yeah, you know, and and uh, and taking this this job, and I, I knew that they have struggled, and uh, I look at that as a challenge. And uh, uh, currently, uh, I I am changing the offense, changing the defense. Uh, I'm bringing a new perspective to the program, and the staff there, and uh, uh, my areas of coaching expertise uh, I brought there. You know, I I think that that what they have done in in the past is run a spread offense and. And coaching against them the uh, past few years, Getting it's been fairly, fairly easy to game to plan 40. against it. Uh, there's and lots of um, tendencies that they give away. And, and, uh, and I felt as if I took this job that I feel that we can, we can change that uh, simply by changing the offense, um, uh, working the kids, to, uh, coaching them to the level that they need to be. Uh, that, that's right now where, where I'm at. Uh, defensively, we're, we're, we're running a 4-4 defense. Same that they've run before, but I'm bringing my system in, and we want to attack, attack teams with uh, uh, blitzes and stunts and uh, gap protection. And, uh, you know, I think, I think we have the abilities to do that. Players been very receptive to this and positive. I know it's only been a few days right. and things like that, but 
pretty positive responses to all this? Yeah, you know, uh, and we are running an option offense. So it's going to be run-based, uh, a little different for, for the kids there. And I feel that uh, they're really, really taking on to it. Uh, in, in three days, I've, I've got two run plays, two pass plays in, and I'm taking it slow. Uh, I'm a firm believer in, in let's, uh, uh, let's get good at some little things and then show it in different ways and execution. And, and that's, that's what we're really focusing on right now as a team is execution and, and just learning the basics. Uh, you know, I, I took it as let's start over from where you were. Let's, let's forget the past. Let's, let's move on to the future. Uh, uh, we're starting over and, and you know, like, uh, the kids like a fresh start. They're, they're excited. They're, the intensity level in practice has been great. And, and it's been nice because we've had numbers too. So. That's great. Um, I know it's, it's a new thing for you, but this co-op program between Kohler and Lutheran, and uh, probably to you, they're just players with numbers. It probably doesn't matter what school, but uh, it's been a pretty good uh, working relationship with uh, Kohler Lutheran and situation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, both administrations have been great in, in this transition. Uh, in fact, uh, Al Holzheimer, the former head coach, he's also the principal over there. He, I, I kept him on staff. I, I, I thought it was important to keep a staff member at each school. Um, this year, we have 13 Kohler kids going over, which is the most in, in the, the co-op's uh, history of, of Kohler kids going over. Um, I think I'll be able to uh, help recruit kids in the school system to, to come out and play and, and with the younger kids start with the youth football. and, and uh, uh, it's been great. Uh, athletic directors have, have been have been wonderful in the transition, and they're excited, and I'm excited. Uh, the parents have been good, uh, and I can't wait to meet more of them. But uh, um, you know, it's been great transition. I, I I couldn't. I'm glad I took the job, and uh, I think the administration is too. Yeah, you were mentioning uh, off the air. There's been a lot of things going on over at Kohler with redoing the field and positive things there as well. So. Obviously, the school's behind you as well. Absolutely, the school and the community in general. Uh, you know, uh, I know a couple of years ago when when Kohler ended football, it was it was it was bad there. The community didn't like that, uh, and and the support from them has been great. And and now that they, uh, with the new field possibilities coming along, we just want to revamp our facility, make it make it uh, top of the line, and right there with the rest of the county, and uh, uh, make it a place where kids want to come play football. And that that. And that ultimately, that'd be a great goal for our program. Let's talk a little bit about your team here. Uh, strengths of your, your team. I know it's a little bit early, but some things you've seen early on that, that really shine for you. Yeah, obviously, I said the numbers. We had, we had 42 kids come out and grab equipment, and uh, that's most in the past few years. Uh, I think we have good senior leadership. Uh, we don't have many seniors, but, but they're leaders. And they're experienced. I got a, a good quarterback. And Kurt Duco, uh, and he's uh, he's got experience, and that's what I need right now at that spot. And, and to be a leader, I got a great fullback, Ryan Johansson, uh, probably the biggest in the conference, at about 250 pounds, and he's fast. So I told him my goal is let's get three yards of carry, you know. So uh, and he's up for the challenge, and uh, uh, you know we're uh, uh, we're intense right now in practice, and and I like the positive attitudes, and, and that's definitely a strength of us right now. And we can only get better from there. What's that? Uh, expectations on the season at all, or would you like to make the playoffs, or <laughs> start moving up the ladder a little bit? Yeah, or? I mean, hey, I, what coach wouldn't want to make playoffs, right? right? Um, um, is that a possibility with us this year? Uh, I don't know. Time will tell. Uh, I think absolutely we can get wins. Uh, you know, uh, the conference is tough. There's good coaches in our conference. They're they're going to be prepared week after week. And uh, I feel that we can be prepared week after week, too. And it's just going to matter of uh, whether uh, kids show up to play and, and, and if they take to the offense and defense and, and want to win. I think that's a good comment you made about your conference. Sometimes people around the area, oh, you follow north or south. But, you know, if you watch the CLC over the last few years, a lot of those teams have made it a couple pass in the rounds of the playoffs. And you do play in a tough league. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, look at, you'll get Cedar Grove, Random Lake. Uh, Howard's Grove, those are top tier teams in our conference. Uh, we'd love to, to beat them. Uh, it takes a lot, and, and we know that going into those games, and, and you got to play. Uh, and, the, and the other games are, are, are no gimmies. Uh, we have to prepare each week just the same as the next week. Um, 
but our focus too is right now take take week by week, game by game. Uh, not once am I going to mention any game down the road. Right now, our first game is Lake Country Lutheran. That's our focus. When we're done with that game, we're moving on the next week, and uh, and that's how I want our kids to think too. Well, thanks so much for coming in. It was a pleasure to meet you, and good luck on the season. Thank you. When we return, Marty and I will have our closing thoughts. <laughs> Well, Chris, it was a great show again this year, and uh, we want to thank the coaches for giving of their time to come in and make this possible. Uh, Chris, as you look at our schedule for this year, what do you see as the top games for our viewers to watch? Well, right off the bat, Marty, in August we have uh, the North-South game, the 29th. It's hard to believe that the summer's gone, come and gone, and now we have that game up here. And Two bummers on that one, though. I got to bring this up and that one is it's a non-conference game again this year and uh, talk about the impact it has having that game before school starts. Yeah not all the you know kids and parents and everybody's back and this you know school's not in so I always think that's a little bit tough and sometimes you don't get the fan base you do but the, the loyal uh, locals <laughs> will be out there at that game supporting that and we have two uh, Lutheran Kohler games on the schedule and of course we're going to end up with the uh, uh, again, Lakeland College, we always like going out there, and they treat us very well. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Pulaski play north this year. They, they gave them a pretty good licking last year. They have a nice program. i uh, going to skip a couple te teams that we're going to have nice, but hopefully next year when the conference change is over, the uh, schedule will get better for us as well. One of the things we talked about this before going on the air is the fact that, again, both high schools, when they're home, they're both home, and when they're both away, they're both away. And there's a lot of people in town here that like to go and see both North and South games on a Friday night. They get their fish and then they go to the games and you know you got to pick and choose and it's a little disappointing not only for the fans but for us as well. Let's talk about our predictions and I'm not too happy. <laughs> <laughs> in uh, the Central Lakeshore Conference we both picked Random Lake and they did win first place. They tied for first with Oosburg at 5-1 uh, and one, so we get uh, kudos for that pick. In the Eastern Wisconsin Conference I had a big boo-boo because I picked Chilton. They're not in that conference anymore. You picked Plymouth. Plymouth uh, finished down a little bit. Kiwani, uh, Kiwaskum, pardon me, finished at 7-0. and So we didn't do so good in that conference. In the Fox River Valley, you picked Ashwaubenon. And again, it was a, actually I found out this was a three-way tie for the conference championship with uh, De Pere and Bayport. I, on the other hand, went traditional picked Notre Dame and they finished down a little bit. Uh, they finished 5-0 and overall. It's time to do our picking. Who are you going to pick in the Central Lakeshore? I'm going to go with Random Lake again. I'm going to go with Howard's Grove. Okay. We'll jot this down after. Okay. <laughs> like maybe way after. <laughs> Eastern Wisconsin Conference. I'm going to take Plymouth again. Okay. And with Dan Yedis not at Falls year, we'll see what, how Falls does with some changes over there. Okay, I'm going to go with Q Oscom. Okay. Hopefully they can do it two years in a row. And then we have the Fox River Valley Conference again. I know there was a very young squad that did well last year. I'm taking Bayport. Bayport, okay. I'll take Ashwaubenon on your pick from last year. Any more comments out of you? Uh, no. I think it was an interesting situation last year. You saw the Bay Conference teams all doing very well. And okay. uh, we'll see if that changes. Hopefully one of uh, our teams here in the area maybe competes for, for a, uh, a berth. Spot. Yep. Okay, with that, we're going to sign off. I want to thank you for watching. Again, thanks to the coaches for coming in. And uh, we'll all see you on the 29th for that first high school football game. North, that's, uh, pardon me, south at Sheboygan North. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you down the road. Yeah.